Imagine your child's medical provider overlooking a medical condition that could lead to different forms of cancer. What would you do? This is the case of my wife and I and our son when we noticed something peculiar on his left leg. We took him to different doctors and they told us he was going to be okay and that it was normal. After almost a year of, of looking through doctors and, and checking out different opinions, we finally got the answer that gave us cause to pause. Hemihyperplasia. My goal in this speech is to explain and inform the, early, the importance of early diagnosis and early treatment in order to increase awareness about this rare condition. For me to achieve this goal, I will go over three main points. What hemihyperplasia is, symptoms, causes, and prevalence. Two, tumor occurrence, common types of tumors, and percentages. And three, the importance of early diagnosis and early treatment. Let's start with hemihyperplasia. According to Dr. Claire Cusio and Martin, in an article published in 2008, hemihyperplasia is a congenital overgrowth disorder with an increased risk of developing embryonal tumors. I say develop because these tumors are in the child's body when they are born and they could get activated as the years go by. Some of the symptoms, the main symptoms of hemihyperplasia according to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is having one side of the body larger than the other. In the case of my son, like I said before, his left leg is larger and chunkier than his right leg. Take a look at this picture so you have a better outlook of what I am talking about. Let's talk about prevalence. Prevalence, according to Dr. Mutafoglu and others in a case report in 2010, they mentioned the past reports that the, occurring, the prevalence of this disease is 1 in 86,000. It sounds very short, but out of those 1 in 86,000, the cause for this disease or condition is very sporadic. 85% to be, to be exact. 10 to 15% can be passed on from mother or father to children. Now that we talk about a little bit hemihyperplasia, prevalence, symptoms and causes, let's move to tumor occurrence. The most common types of tumors according to the Children's Hospital of St. Louis are Wilms tumor and hepatoblastoma. Wilms tumor is kidney cancer. Hepatoblastomas is liver cancer. These two main tumors were substantiated by the only prospective report in, that was done by Hoim and others in 1998. They talk about, they follow 168 children for 10 years and they found 10 tumors and 9 individuals, bringing the tumor occurrence to approximately 6%. Out of those 10 tumors they found, five of them were Wilms tumor, three of them were hematop hepatoblastoma, and the other two tumors they found, they listed as other. This is why the, com the main common types of tumors are Wilms tumors and hepatoblastoma. Although 6% sound chance sounds really, really low, we need to understand that we need early diagnosis and treatment to increase rate of survival, which brings me to my third main point. Early diagnosis and treatment. According to Claire Cuso and Martin, they recommended doctors to refer those individuals with suspected hemihyperplasia as soon as is suspected to a clinical geneticist. They also made recommendations on treatment. Every three months for Wilms tumor, every three months from age zero to eight, and for hepatoblastoma from age zero to four, also doing in intervals of three months. To search for Wilms tumors, they'll use an ultrasound, and for hepatoblastoma, I'll do a blood test. In the case of my son, it's very consistent with this study as he goes every three months to get checked for blood tests and ultrasound to search for tumors. Now that we understand a little bit about the, early the importance of early diagnosis and early treatment. I'll, uh, let's summarize. We talk about what hemihyperplasia is, we talk about the tumor occurrence, and we talk about early diagnosis and early treatment. Hemihyperplasia is a condition that if treated earlier and diagnosed early, it could increase the rate of survival 
and lower the risk of doing harmful treatments to children. Let's go, I conclude with this. I leave you with this. My son and I, and my, and my wife, we've been going through this for three years. This is very hard, but we are blessed that we found the diagnosis early and the treatment early because it could, re it could increase the rate of survival. As the Children's Hospital of St. Louis said, cancers treated at an earlier stage are easier to treat and increase rate of survival. This is what we hold on to every day of our life.